Testing, one, two. Hey, did a thing. Got my Subaru drip on today. Zane. So, uh, you probably guess I'm gonna talk about the 2021 Subaru Crosstrek Sport. Howdy folks, it's been a while. How are ya? Been good here? Uh, if a bit busy with probably way too many projects at once and honestly not a whole lot of maintenance or upgrades on the vehicle fleet to note, uh, but since my last video, the KlugeCast channel here has crossed a tiny milestone and we now have 1,000 subscribers. Yay! So I just wanted to take a moment and thank you for watching, commenting, subscribing, and generally just spending part of your valuable time on Earth here on my little channel, so thank you. Today we are shifting gears and talking about the 2021 Subaru Crosstrek Sport, which is finished in a beautiful hue called Plasma Yellow Pearl, and that car has reached its own little milestone of 25,000 miles. So far with the Crosstrek, I've made videos about installing a CVT cooler and thermostat, and also about towing a 5x8 U-Haul trailer across the country, and I will put a link to that in the description. And I've been meaning to make a general 25,000 mile review of the car uh, in the future on this channel. It's still under the bumper to bumper warranty for basically another eight months or 11,000 miles, whichever comes first. And the powertrain warranty has another two years and eight months or about 35,000 miles, whichever comes first. But I've run out of complimentary oil changes and I'm cool with that since I prefer to do that myself anyway. It's not just about making sure everything is done correctly with the materials that I want, but it's also that I can take oil samples while I'm doing the oil change, which as a car nerd, I am all about. Yeah! Now, whenever I can, I like to take a sample of oil and have it analyzed by a lab. And that can tell you so much about an engine. It can tell you if something is going wrong that you'll have to address or look into later instead of letting it become this big, expensive ordeal um, at an inopportune moment. I've been taking oil samples of my BMW Z3 ever since I got that about uh, six or seven years ago now. Um, and I have a video to that that I'll link into the description where I go through uh, where I send the sample off to, what you get back from the lab in terms of information, and also go through six years of oil samples from one car, which is pretty cool and I hope pretty informative. Now in between the complimentary oil changes that Subaru gave me with my Crosstrek, I took the liberty of making my own oil changes and sending samples off to the same service, which is called Blackstone Labs of Fort Wayne, Indiana. Now part of this was because I wanted to see how this brand new Subaru engine, which is the FB25 2.5 liter flat four engine, uh, was doing during the break-in period and also a little beyond that initial break-in period. Break-in, also known as run-in, is what happens early on in the life of an engine after it is first built or rebuilt. So when an engine comes out of the factory, the piston rings don't perfectly match the texture of the cylinder walls, but as an engine runs, the piston rings and the cylinder walls will wear against each other, creating a better seal and starting a good wear pattern between the two. Because there's been a lot of advancements in manufacturing engines with tighter tolerances, modern cars don't require elaborate break-in procedures. But most manufacturers recommend taking it easy within the first 500 or even 1500 miles. Some cars like the Corvette C8 will limit torque uh, through the engine computer and even change the rev counter to let you know how you should drive the car. Subaru's complimentary oil changes are every 6,000 miles from new up to 24,000 miles. But I didn't like the idea of having a brand new engine go for that long without an oil change. Because during a break-in period, you'll get a lot more metal in the oil than usual and I believe that has the potential to wear the engine out faster than you might want. Also, I was just interested in what the hell's going on in there. What's going on? So I ended up doing my first oil change myself at 3,000 miles and taking a sample, doing another oil change and sample myself at 6,000 miles. Then I had the dealer do another oil change at 7,000 miles, a complimentary one, and did another oil change and sample myself at 9,000 miles. Then Subaru did the next two complimentary oil changes at 13,000 and 17,000 miles, and then I followed up with another one at 20,000 miles. So, altogether, I have samples from 3,000, 6,000, 9,000 and 20,000 miles. I would have liked to take more samples, except the only way to sample without draining all the oil in the pan is to use the hand pump and draw tube. 
And the draw tube is just not small enough to get down into the oil pan to do that. So that's what I had to work with. Over those four oil samples encompassing some 20,000 miles, uh, there were five elements that I think said the most about the break-in period, which I will go through now, beginning with aluminum, or as our British friends say, aluminium. Say aluminum. Aluminium. <laughs> the FB25 is an all-aluminum engine with aluminum pistons and some aluminum in the bearings. Aluminum in the engine oil, though, most likely comes from the bearings as they wear, or maybe even remnants of the casing and manufacturing process that somehow end up in the oil. We can see on our chart here that aluminum started out at twice the concentration of the universal average, and that's what Blackstone Lab says is the average concentration that it sees for all engines of that type. This dropped a bit at 6,000 miles, rose again at 9,000 miles for unknown reasons, and has been on a downward trend ever since. Now, as you can see, it's still a bit elevated at 20,000 miles, uh, but the wear metal has significantly subsided. Iron. You'll find it basically everywhere in the engine because the element is foundational to steel. But more importantly, you'll find it in the cylinder liners that wear during break-in. So what did the iron content look like? On that first oil change, the oil had more than three times the normal concentration of iron at 27 parts per million, but had this visually pleasing parabolic trend downward that leveled off at the universal average of eight parts per million. Very nice. Now on to copper, which comes from bushings or bearings, or sometimes comes from anti-seize if that's been used in assembly somewhere. Like iron, this started out at a super high concentration of 55 times the universal average. You really should be seeing this at two parts per million in these engines, but the line did dramatically decrease, and by 20,000 miles, we were down at one part per million. Molybdenum. Molybdenum is an anti-wear additive in oils, which may have been used in engine assembly, but it could also be part of the piston ring alloy or a coating on the piston ring, which could explain why this element started out at 10 times the universal average. And like other wear indicators, it's down to the universal average by the 20,000 mile mark. Silicon, not to be confused with silicone. Uh, this can show up in oil if the engine is ingesting dust particles. It also is a big component of gasket making compounds like RTV, which I'm guessing is what we see in the chart here. I don't really know. Uh, the first oil change at 3,000 miles showed 15 times the normal level of silicon, uh, probably from oil washing away the excess gasket material if there was any. Uh, but like all the other charts, we're starting very high and then working our way down to the universal average pretty quickly. Now, as I said before, break-in, or at least as we interpret that from instructions from the factory, lasts somewhere between 500 and 1500 miles. And while that might be true, the oil tests I ran suggest that the engine doesn't really finish its full break-in until maybe 10,000 miles, if we go off the concentration of wear metals and other wear materials that we found in the oil samples. Now, to be clear, I don't think that manufacturers are lying to us about taking it easy on the engine for the first thousand miles, and I don't think it's really helpful or realistic to say, baby your engine for 10,000 miles either. But I do think this shows that 10,000 miles or even 6,000 miles might be too long for that first oil change on a new engine. And I think if you really want to avoid unnecessary wear on the engine, it looks like oil changes at three, six, and 9,000 miles on a brand new engine could be really helpful down the road. We won't really know the full story on this engine until maybe 100,000, 200,000, 500,000 miles down the road, and even doing things like looking at oil consumption, compression tests, and other things available. But I think one or two additional oil changes early on in an engine's life might actually be worth it in the end. But hey, what do you think? Uh, leave your thoughts in the comments. I would love to know what you think about this. That's all for now. I want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you down the road. Zane.